Well, I was born to Sadie and Charlie Hickerson. Um, we lived in uh, an area of New Orleans called Central City. Central City was is an African American community, very very poor community, but we were all very loving and very a very loving and very happy community. It was a wonderful place to grow up in. Um, that's where I grew up uh, until the age of uh, 12. When I graduated from sixth grade, my parents moved, took us from the ghetto and moved us uptown. Moved us uptown to a community that we really did not know. The community was totally white. We settled in about a week or two, you know, and then the strangest thing happened. All of these for sale signs started popping up all around the neighborhood, especially the block in which we lived in, on the street we lived in, you know, all these for sale signs started popping up. Well, we were kids. We knew absolutely nothing about what was going on, you know. And I, you know, I really did not understand it until much later in my life, you know, that this was a racial thing. And then they got to know us. They got to know us and things changed in the community. Eventually, over the years and stuff, it became one big community, you know, with the black family. The word gay came along much later in my life. I always knew I was a sissy. You know, I always knew that was the name that was called to you when you were a kid in African-American communities. You know, you were a sissy. And, you know, growing up uh, back in the 60s in my era, um, those are things that you kept a secret. And I ran across a magazine that my neighbor, the white guy that lived next door to me, put in his trash. And there were all these magazines, and in all the magazines was this word gay. So I started putting two and two together, and I realized he was gay. I realized that the man next door to me was gay. You know, after reading the magazines and seeing what happens at his house and who comes and who goes and all that kind of stuff, you know, and I realized he was, you know. But, you know, looking at these magazines from his trash, you know, taught me a lot. You know, it taught me that there are places uh, for people like me in the city, in New Orleans, you know, so... I, you know, through those magazines, I found some addresses, and I ventured out. I found places that, or, you know, that where gay people hung out at. I found bars and stuff, you know, uh, bars that some of them still exist now. When I finally got enough nerve to go into that gay bar, you know, I finally got enough nerve to go up there discovered it, I found it, I dressed up, I got pretty, you know, and I finally got enough nerve to walk in it, you know. And uh, and when I walked into it, I began to feel that, I experienced that same thing again. You know, it was a period of time when blacks, when the gay bars, the gay community was predominantly white. And I began to experience the same thing, you know, being last to be served at the bar when you're sitting up at the bar, you know, and all the white guys stuff, getting their drinks and stuff before you, you know, um, for me, it translated back to the for sale side. You know, it translated right back to that. I began to feel that same isolation that, you know, um, that I felt when I was 12 years old. I never stopped going. I, I, I endured it. You know, I would sit there by myself. And then I eventually got to meet the bartenders and they got to know me. It's important that you hear a lot of this stuff from a black perspective. It's an experience, it's an adventure, it's, an, it's a journey, sometimes crippling, but you know, you get up, you dust yourself off, and you fight on.